Okay, we got another trailer for Ant-Man and the Wasp Quantumania. It's looking very, very good. I'm very excited to see what they have in store for us. Jonathan Majors alone is what's selling me for the ticket. And I, I genuinely can't wait. So what I'm going to be doing here for you guys is I'm going to be breaking down the trailer shot by shot. Giving you my opinion on the trailer while we're at it. And just pointing out some details you guys might have missed. But if you guys could please hit that like button. Please click that subscribe button. Turn on those notification bells as it does help with the algorithm. And lately YouTube has just not been recommending my videos much. So it would help a lot. But let's start off with the breakdown. Okay, so the trailer starts off with us seeing Cassie Lang, who has actually been arrested, which is a callback to the very first Ant-Man movie, which shows us that Scott Lang was actually arrested. Now, this actually could be the case because he, Scott has been trapped in the quantum realm for five years and they haven't seen each other. So she probably did something that she was she thought was good for the people but ended up being illegal but this is definitely going to be a motivating part for scott in the movie especially because he's been gone for quite a while to her and he's going to need to be this parent again so ties in pretty well with what kang says to ant-man himself he tells him that he will exchange time to him for and a request that he does for him this is also where we get our best look of kang's blue pfizer mask which people were asking and complaining for in the last trailer they're like where the hell is his blue mask this is unfair well it's not just his actual skin it's it's a mask so I actually much rather prefer when the mask is off, but I'm really liking what Kang is looking like in this movie, especially played by Jonathan Majors. I think this trailer did a great job of showing us him, and that metallic suit is just great. I think they nailed it in this movie. Also got confirmation on where our characters have landed in the quantum realm. In a press conference, it was confirmed by Marvel that Bill Murray's character, Lord Kryler, in the description it says Lord Kryler is the governor of ASIC, a, a bizarre and cushy community within the quantum realm. Call him crowdly or self-centered. Kryler unapologetically enjoys the high life status, grants him expensive meals, exotic cocktails, and top-notch transportation aboard his huge pleasure yacht. It seems he and Janet are old acquaintance, but the details are vague, and she'd like to keep it that way. Bill Murray portrays Lord Kyler. Bring to us that Axia is the city our characters have kind of landed at, but also giving us the actual answer to the whole twist of telling us lord kryler and janet have been old acquaintance i think we can all guess this one they've been in a relationship while janet was in the quantum realm and that's not gonna stick too well with hank and is gonna cause some conflict next shot gives us what all marvel fans have been asking for ever since the comic-con trailer but we finally have seen modok's face and his real face ever since the reveal of modok a lot of people have been like wait where's his ugly face where's his ugly face and marvel just gave it to us i kind of wish that this was saved for the actual movie but marvel just probably saw the amount of people complaining for it so they just went ahead and showed it and to be fair i don't hate it like i don't know what people expected out of a character who looks like this and is built like a coca-cola can but honestly you should have really not expected much if you had your expectations high for a character like this i think he looks just fine and even looks better with the mask on now that the face has actually been revealed i think we can talk about the big spoiler of who modok is in the movie he confirmed months ago that after the events of ant-man the very first one that Darren Cross is actually playing Modok. Now, this could be the case because of the end of the Battle of Ant Man 1, he's been sent to the Quantum Realm and his body got deformed there, turning him into a head and making all this technology to be a floating head with tiny dinosaur hands. But to be fair with you guys, I don't think this is Darren Cross. I've zoomed into this image. I've seen 4K images. I've seen every strand of hair on this man. And I don't think it's actually him. And I kind of have reason to believe, but I'm not 100% sure. 
if you remember in Loki season one, we actually do see Darren Crox's mask as a huge form of it and in the same sequence we do see a Kang tower but that's just probably Marvel doing some world connecting which I do applaud them for. The thing I have to hand it off to this movie is the insane visuals they are not missing with this movie especially when he's jumping into that time portal. What I think is a very clever shot in this trailer is we kind of get a callback to Ant-Man 1 where Scott has ants and he basically uses them to climb stuff but instead of using ants he's using himself this time climbing up to this big yellow shiny thing that Kang probably requested him for but the big question is why? First Quantum Mania trailer dropped, everyone realized that these rings look very, very similar to the 10 rings Shang-Chi has and the scarab that Miss Marvel has so that she can use her powers. That connects all three of these things is that they're all able to be used to time travel in a sort of way. For Shang-Chi, it's when he uses the ring, basically time stops for him to where he doesn't age. And for Miss Marvel, she was able to go back in time to go to her grandma. And for these rings, I think they could be able to do the same. What I think is happening here is the request Kang gave Scott is to retrieve this ring time thingy majingy for him using his small Scots to shrink it down and give it to him. Hell, I wouldn't be surprised if it's even this thing, this orb that he puts into his time chair in the very first trailer. If we use some of the world building in the MCU in general, we can call back to Civil War, where in this scene, it shows us that he's about to shoot one of the pin particles, which is red to be specific, at the ring, but we learn in Civil War that the blue is used to enlarge things, while the red is used to sm shrink things, so this is just a small prediction of mine. But I, I I think it's pretty good to say the least. Also love how menacing Kang looks like just looking at his army from above and seeing his army. It just looks so sick to me. But from there the trailer goes ahead and gives us a bit too much to where they tell us that Kang obviously does betray Scott falls through with his deal with Ant-Man which leads to the best part of the trailer and that's just Kang whooping Ant-Man slash Scott. This scene here gives me chills just seeing Jonathan Majors using his abilities or shall I say Kang using his future abilities and all his tech on Ant-Man. Rest in peace Scott like as much as I love you you're not surviving this movie and I I'm putting that lightly because Look at this man, Marvel purposely broke a piece of his armor to show us his physique. They aren't joking when they say this is Kang, you know. But hell, they couldn't even end the trailer off there. They gotta give us one of the coldest lines in the MCU. Win. We both just have to lose. There, it just tells me how this movie's gonna end. Both of them are gonna be sent to do two different timelines, two of them being stuck in their own timelines, trying to get out. Hell, I wouldn't be surprised if that's what Kang Dynasty is all about. At the end of the day, I obviously don't think Scott's gonna be dying, but it's gonna end off bad for the both of them, especially Scott, which I just think they're both gonna be landing in two different timelines if Scott wants to make it out at least somewhat alive. But that is my trailer breakdown for Emma and the Wasp Quantumania. How did you guys feel about the trailer? Did you like it? Did you hate it somewhere in the middle? Are you guys baffled by Modok's design? And are you actually terrified to see Kang as much as I am? But as always, I'm Mr. 4K and take care.